So, all right, this is cooling system stuff here. I want to tell you guys about. What I want to do is I want to show y'all. Uh, this is how your cooling system is laid out. And some of you may think you know more about this than you do because it's an easy trap to fall into. Um, here, this one right here, this is an unusual cooling system. It's an illustrated thing. But if it's got a radiator cap on here, and it's got a little sort of a weak little snap-on cap on this side right here, now you're always going to add your coolant right here, and then you're going to keep that. Now, what I like to do, and I'm going to show you a little more about this later, is uh, how many of you guys have ever drained a cooling system and refilled it? Okay, what do you got to do to do that the right way? Take the hose loose. It's not like filling a bucket up. In other words, it ain't like filling up a bucket. If you pour water in here and you get it up to the top and you think, whoop, that's it, I'm done, and you got to drive off, there's a bunch of air that's trapped in the block that needs to come out of there. So what you, if you do it right, you'll spend probably 25 minutes making, or maybe 30 minutes making doggone sure that everything's right. I like to hook my uh, wireless vehicle interface up and put the engine coolant readings on a big screen over here so I can watch that coolant uh, temperature while this is happening. Because whenever the, the, it'll go up, 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 and then when it goes down and then it starts going up and down again, you typically know it's okay. Uh, but usually what happens in the olden days, we would fill these things up and whatever, we would keep adding water and wait till the thermostat open and then all of a sudden it would just puke all over the floor and there'd be water everywhere and it'd be a big mess and all that. And I'll tell you what I, what I came up with, you know, personally to, to do about that later. You might notice, you know, here's your thermostat right here mm -hmm. on that one right there. And this is an oddball layout, like I say. And this one here is kind of laid out like one that doesn't have a radiator cap. Usually one that's got a, a pressure tank like that with all these extra hoses hooked to it doesn't have this. You know, this is just sort of like a generic thing. Uh, but whenever that thermostat is closed, the cooling system bypasses through the heater core because they want this to get warm as soon as possible. And, of course, your water pump is actually what's going to be pushing it through there. All right, and look at, let's look at another diagram. In order to understand this the right way, it's good to look at several diagrams, more than just one. All right, now this one here is a four-cylinder engine. And see how you got that? That water pump is basically when the thermostat, there's your thermostat, you basically that thermostat opens up and starts letting coolant go from the block through the radiator. When that thermostat is closed, nothing goes through here, right? But the, the coolant that's warming up in here is going to be pushed through the heater core, basically it's going to be pushed through the engine block where it can pick up heat, and then it goes through the heater core and then back out here into the water pump. So it's, it's sucking it in there and pushing it through there. But it won't, why is it pushing it through the engine first? So that it can pick up some heat, man. You want that, you want that heater start, start getting hot right away as quick as possible, right? Okay, so you got these expansion plugs. Uh, these aren't freeze out plugs. Basically, sometimes whenever, what happens to water when it freezes? Expands. 9% by volume, right? Now, it's not always going to push those out. Those are not, sometimes it'll push those out, but that doesn't typically protect your engine block like you would think. It'll crack that sucker. Uh, when that water expands, it's going to expand. You know what I mean? You ever leave a jug in, I mean, something in the fridge, freezer is going to do that. All right, so, and there's your transmission cooler that's down in there that this water's flowing around and basically the oil's on the inside of that. All right, here's another one right here. See that? There's your thermostat right there. There's your water pump. See everything? It's, see how it's showing you all that? Now, this was a little harder to read, uh, and so, and it's got at least numbers on here and all that kind of thing, but you notice when the thermostat's closed, it's always shoving that coolant through the heater core. Now, they don't have arrows showing you that, but you've also got a heater control valve. And then there's your blower motor that's blowing the fan into your other. Let's look at this one right here now. Notice the same thing. What they're basically doing there is they're pushing that coolant through the heater core, comes back into the water pump. Some, on some of your Chevys, it goes back into the radiator instead of going back in the water pump. But there's your thermostat. Until that thermostat opens, nothing is going to go through the radiator. Now, if you go to take this radiator cap off, and you grab, and I told uh, Brittany this the other day, you fill in this bypass hose and see if it's really tight. If it's got pressure on it, you do not need to take that cap off, and everybody probably knows that. <clears throat> so don't, uh, don't get fall in the, this one guy, and I, I talked and talked and talked about this, he says filling up a cooling system on a vehicle, ain't like pouring water in a bucket, you gotta make sure you got the air out of it, all that. Well, he was putting his radiator on his own vehicle, and he had the idea that 
he just was in a big hurry, so he put it in there and he filled it up and he drove it off. And whenever uh, it overheated on him down there in the parking lot somewhere the next day, he rushed out there and opened the radiator cap and it sprayed hot water all over. Jimmy! Hi. Hey. All right. Hey, I got your key. Okay. All right. Good she always has something on the phone. Uh, well, we, we're fighting with a problem. I finally, there's a couple of things going on with it I'm trying to straighten out. But, uh, but anyway, but one way or another, um, this particular water pump right here, uh, now you know about the weep hole in the water pump, right? Mm -hmm. The weep hole leaks when the water pump still goes bad. And there was a guy from South Africa that sent me an email one time, and he was talking with a British accent, even in his email. And uh, he says it cost him a big wad of money in order to fix his water pump, and he didn't have the money for a water pump, and it was leaking from that hole, and can I just stop up the hole with some epoxy or something? And I said, no, put a little bit of brake fluid in the radiator, and you'll watch it stop leaking. So he put a little brake fluid, that's no filling station trick. A little brake fluid in there, it swells the seal up, it stops leaking, then you drain the cooling system and put fresh stuff back in it. And <laughs> he tried that, and he emailed me back, and he goes, well, knock me over with a feather, it stopped leaking. You know, so. Anyway, we got him out. We got him past all that. But it was like cost him a month paid to buy a water pump for the Mercedes he was driving, and he just really didn't have that much money. I figured he'd probably go to a diamond mine in South Africa to get him something. All right. So this is another one right here. Thermostat. See that? Right here. You notice we don't have heater hoses on this one here. Pump first makes water through the jacket of the cylinder. It's going around the cylinders. Just you know, absorb. the head is the hottest place on the engine, though. The head's typically the hottest place. That's why you have cylinder head temperature sensors on a lot of the vehicles nowadays. And here's another thing right here. You're going to thermostat, you notice that's blocking that. It's not passing through the heater cord, just like I said before. What's that right there got water going to it for? Why does the throttle body on that vehicle have water going to it? Why does the idle air control have it? These Asian folks like to run hot water to the idle air control valve and use a little wax element to you know, make it open and close. So I have electrical stuff in there too. The problem with that is when you have to have a replacement idle air control valve, it's five hundred dollars. You know, but anyway, they run into the throttle body because if you're driving in these really cold climates up here, and you got all this cold air coming through here, and, the, and that throttle body's going to be cold. There's going to be cold air coming through that throttle body. And they get get over your laughing and all that kind of stuff. So you hear what I'm saying? If the thing is about a, Let's say you're at about an angle right here and you're about half throttle. If you if it, all that ice gets in there and it uh, stops that throttle plate at that angle here, all of a sudden when you let off, you're going 60 miles an hour. And you can't stop. Turn your ignition off. Well, yeah, you know that that works, I suppose, but you shouldn't have to do that. And so the way we get around that is we run hot water through there. You know, have you ever noticed that on some of these cars they got this plastic? A thing over the throttle cable where you can't get your hand on it to rip the motor up. What's that there for? Is it to keep your hands off? To of prevent it? ice from getting built up on Snow. Or? Snow. If you ever drive one in the, you ever drive one when it's snowing a lot, you'd be astonished if you, when you drive one, if you've been driving it all day in snow, when you open the hood, the whole engine compartment is packed with snow. I mean, there's just snow all under there. Wouldn't it melt then? Well, eventually, but it, it can get under there and stop that throttle plate partially open. See, they're concerned about that. So they cover it up, they call it a snow shield, that little part over there. Also, they make sure that the throttle body is kept warm by hot coolant so you don't have any issues with the throttle staying stuck partially open. All right, here's another one. You're going to get tired of looking at these, isn't it? All right, water channels in the block in the head. This one here, you notice it's going through, coming out in the back, going into the heater. Just remember that. Now, this, this water pump is turned by the timing belt. You notice that? What does this engine remind you of? Just looking at it, if you've been working on very many engines, what do you think? It, what is this motor? Who made this motor? Ford. Like a Ford Ranger. See, you got them, uh, that timing, uh, and there, of course, you got your radiator up here, top tank, expansion tank. Radiator, head, see, the head's the hottest part of it. Water pump's going to push the water through the heater core. Well, it actually pushes it through the heater core this way, and then it comes back into the water pump, and then it goes again. And that's, that's really cool the way that looks. This is the last slide that I got for you here. But what system is that? That's not the cooling system. What system is that? Yeah, it's all. 
pay the oil pumps picking up the oil, driving it through the filter, goes to the lifters, goes through the push rod, operates those, uh, you know, lubricate those rocker arms, and then it drains back down and goes into here again. But you're also feeding your crankshaft. See that? So you're feeding the crankshaft, you're also feeding that. This is all drilled through the block. Okay, so that's a, all right, well, I do have it one more. When the engine started, oh yeah, I was going to tell you about the radiator cap. I did add some more time. When the engine started, water pumps connected. See, that's a pretty little thing right there. Here's something else that's really important. The reaction surface that those impellers are spinning next to, if they didn't, if, they, if the uh, water pump is rusted away. Let me see. Uh, see that water pump behind you that's real rusty? All right, you see how rusty those those uh, blades are. Make, make sure you hand them, hand, pass that around everybody. See how far it is from those little impeller blades to the uh, reaction surface. Now, how did we find that? What we did on that particular one there, that was on, that was on a Taurus, and they, she had no heat. And so what we did was we unplugged the heater hoses from the uh, water pump. You know, in other words, unhooked it from the heater core and replaced it with a clear hose where we could see what was going on. And you can buy that clear hose at Ace Hardware. And we cranked it up with that clear hose in there, and that clear hose um, showed no water moving through the heater core at all. And so if you don't see any water going through the heater core, that water pump is likely to be rusted away like that. And there's only supposed to be about 25 thousandths of an inch of clearance between those blades and the reaction surface, whether the reaction surface is in the timing cover or whether it's built into the pump. Right. Now this right here is what a thermostat looks like. And it's got one of those closes and another passenger. Let's just pop that on there for you to look at right quick. As this wax element heats up, and I can show you guys how to test that, that wax element heats up. This right here will go down and squeeze that spring and it opens this up so that coolant can go through there. And this right here is a radiator cap and that spring-loaded thing that goes in here. And you got a little, uh, so that's on there. You know, you've got this little surge tank that they call it a degas bottle. There's your pressure cap, radiator overflow, recovery tank, and the, re the recovery uh, hose. Whenever that little uh, coolant expands, it pushes this off its seat and it pushes it over in here. Uh, if it needs to get rid of some air that's in there, it'll push it in here and it can drink the coolant back out of here when the coolant contracts. And there's another one right there. You know, you're basically, if you've got a radiator cap on here, checking the coolant in this bottle is insufficient if you haven't looked in here. But once again, don't take that off if this hose is tight. All right, there's you another one. You got an expansion tank. You notice how it's getting it out of the bottom. So that just go in there and squirt it in there. Now this is a radiator cap. This is this finally is the last one. This radiator cap right here is normally closed, spring pressed. You're squishing this against the a little raised part around there where the radiator cap goes in, and this seat's really tight around there. And so whenever that pressure, each each radiator cap has different pound, 13, 16, whatever pounds, and it pushes this up and pushes it out to the side into that tank. And then whenever the coolant contracts, when it cools off, it opens this little valve right here and it pulls it back in. If you pick a radiator cap up and you hold it and you see this little thing in the middle of it dangling, that is a bad radiator cap and it needs to be replaced. And what I do is I take a cap like this right here and I cut that off of it. I get this bottom part off of it so that all it is is just this top part and it's sealing right here but this can come and go as it please. Now I use that for a tool. That's not something I put on the car and leave on the car. I use it for a tool. And what I do is I make sure that the coolant fill bottle, I make sure that that coolant fill bottle has got plenty of coolant in it. I mean, you know, up to the top hotline. And then I just let this coolant, I let it, it'll, you know, as the thermostat opens and it's getting rid of the air, it'll actually push the coolant in here and it'll come up and down and all that and whenever the thermostat opens it, this water, I don't know if you've ever seen it before, when the thermostat opens the water the radiator just goes slam out of sight, just goes away and you've got to fill it back up. Well if it can, if this is sealed around the top, that this can come and go as it pleases, it'll pull the coolant out of there that it needs and you've got to watch this and make sure you keep some in it. Uh, and whenever it wants to surge up here and when it would have been puking all over the floor, the radiator cap that I'm using for a tool has actually uh, containing it so that it pushes it in here. And now occasionally, in extreme cases, it may try to run this over, but it's a good idea to have a drain pin there if you can help it. Most of the time that won't happen. What's the best part about this is, when that coolant's coming and going as it pleases, and you can get an old radiator cap and make one of these. You just gotta be, you know, tough enough to take it apart. 
The best part about this is whenever you're ready to put your original cap back on there, there's no pressure. You know I mean, it's not dangerous. I mean, because it cannot build pressure with a system here on it. You take that cap off, you lay it aside, you make sure the radiator is full and this tank is full, and then you're done. The upper radiator hose is hot, you know, the thermostat's open, you got that. But always remember that if you're, if I want to have you guys out here later this week doing these uh, draining coolant and putting it back in certain various different engines and all, maybe you do it on the engine on stands or whatever, uh, don't just pour it in there and say I'm done and walk away. You know what I mean? When I failed to give a talk this detailed, I've had people try that because they just want to be done with the worksheet. They just pour the coolant in there, I'm full, yay, and they, they want to just drive it out there and let somebody bring it up. One more thing, there's also some vehicles that have bleeder screws that you're supposed to loosen on bleeder screws when you're filling the coolant system up so the air goes away. But make sure you understand that too. I have taken the heater hose off in extreme cases because it goes behind the thermostat and put a transmission funnel in there and fill the coolant up that way. If the thermostat is in the bottom hose and you want to fill up the block, you know the block fills up a little easier that way. If it's in the bottom hose like it is on this Toyota Camry, you can take the upper radiator hose loose and pour the coolant in the upper radiator hose and fill up the block like that. That way you know there's no air in there. Of course, at the same time, you still got to wait. If it's a cooling fan car, you're going to let that fan kick on and off four times. <coughs> Make darn sure. If the coolant fan kicks on and stays on and the temperature starts keeps going up, you got a problem. Okay? All right, any questions? You, do, you, do they, did you learn something that you didn't know before? You did, didn't you? Okay? All right. Be really careful. Don't get burned because that stuff is bad. You know that. Yeah, if you've ever had ready, if you ever had hot antifreeze spray on you, you know. And if you, here's one more thing. I had one, and I had it on a picture of that thing last week. There was a radiator hose on that Pontiac out there one time I looked, and it was swelled up like a balloon, and it was just about to bust, and that car was over 200 degrees, and it was sitting there running in the hot it's sun. It's on my paper. Yep, it's on there. And I was looking at that thing, and I said, you know, I think I better turn this car off and back away from here. And we replaced the radiator uh, hose on that one. But the radiator hoses can swell up, and they can make little pinholes in you know, they start eating the heater hose out from the inside and it'll have a little pinhole and all that. So, anyway, you don't want to... One hole all the way through it. Huh? One little hole all the way through it. Yeah.